Good evening, everyone. With the time being 6 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, June 29th, 2021, I will call this meeting of the Webster School Committee to order. As a reminder, there were changes issued by Governor Baker modifying the open meeting law requirements given the COVID-19 pandemic and an act related to extending certain COVID-19 measures uh, that were adopted during the state of emergency have been extended. So this meeting's been posted on the district website with a Zoom link allowing the public to join in the meeting. And just another reminder, this be meeting is being recorded both audio and video and will be posted on the district website. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the May 25th meeting. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Member Naparata? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Good evening, Dr. Gogan. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Um, Things have been busy. We had an, uh, a busy end of the year wrap up, but I'm gonna start with my personnel update. Um, summertime is a very busy time for uh, building administrators in central office. So I do have a little bit of a lengthy report. Uh, our summer program coordinators have been appointed. I'm pleased to say that Susan Ricard is our SPED summer Corps director again. <laughs> Ruthann was having issues earlier. She changed computers and changed locations, but it looks like she's still having some difficulties. Maybe we can give her a minute and see if she's able to regain connection. Colleen Nassis is our, is once again, our Park Avenue after school. No, 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 no. Oh no, oh no. You're back. Yep, oh, my. I'm going to get you on my phone as well. This day has been one day. I'm going to try this. Mo, let me in on my phone if you can. Sure, um, okay. So I'm not sure what you heard, but Colleen Nassis is our Bartlett High School Credit Recovery Director. Lois Taylor is our... Um, Park Ave Elementary. Yes, I'm, yes sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Now you're echoing. You have to just mute one of your devices. Leaving this one. No, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. My sincere apologies. I'm really sick of Zoom. I apologize that this has been a crazy, a crazy day. Internet. Um, Lois Taylor is our Park Avenue after school and ASOS director. And Margarita Nieves is our Webster Middle School Summer Engagement Camp Coordinator. Um, I would like to inform you that a bunch of new contracts have been given out. Um, I have put that in your list to Desiree Monez, our administrative assistant and central office, uh, central registrar. Michelle Budney, our project manager for curriculum director, curriculum instruction and assessment and other special district projects. Stacy Quilty, our information specialist, John O'Neill, our IT manager, Ellen Nylon, our food service director, Cheryl Spink, our business office manager, Margarita Nieves, our bilingual school liaison, Tony Peranto, our athletic director, and Jen, Jenna Gouin, our adult education director. We've been busy with filling positions. Uh, Jessica Emery has been appointed the Bartlett high school ELA teacher. She filled uh, this position last year as a long-term sub. Now she's hired on board. We're pleased about that. Jennifer Bergen is a new SPED teacher over at Park Avenue Elementary School. And William Gamato is our, will be our new pre-K K teacher over at Park Avenue Elementary School. With all the shifts, we have received some resignations. Uh, Rachel Blash was a para over at Park Avenue. Uh, she has resigned. Bridget Houston, the co-director of adult education has resigned. And we just received the resignation from Stephanie Appleby over at Bartlett High School. She teaches taught history. I would also like to let you know that we have hired a part-time project um, manager for the Innovation Pathways. She will be working closely with Mr. Thomas and Ms. Nieves over at Bartlett High School to firm up some of the health and human service pathways that we are going to be developing. 
Any questions with regards to personnel before I move on? Just one thing working off my phone, I can't see everybody, so I, I will need some verbal cues if you are trying to tell me something. Um, I'm gonna move on to our tiered focus monitoring um, report. I'm pleased to let you know that we have received notification that the department found our district to be in compliance with all the criteria monitoring during the tiered focus monitoring review, and there's no corrective action at this time. I, I want to um, again give a shout out to Mrs. Kathy Barris and Mrs. Dr. Patty Mackay and Michelle Budney for their organization on this. Um, everyone in the office did a lot of work, but they really took a lead. Mrs. Barris is here. Mrs. Barris, would you like to say a few words about this process? Hi, good evening. Sure, I, I'd be happy to. Um, we were really pleased um, with the finding that we didn't have any findings for the um, tiered focus monitoring. And, you know, I think what is really nice about the process, process is that um, it gives us an opportunity to really go through our um, internal local practices and systems and find what are the things that um, we need to correct in advance. So it gave us um, time to do that and time to do training with staff, which we did um, extensive training, um, especially with our ETLs and the SPED staff. Um, I think um, it gave us also food for thought for some of the practices that we want to improve on. Um, you know, in particular, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, consistency and discipline practices, and that is something that we're going to be addressing um, as a district um, from multiple perspectives. But I think from the special ed perspective, really um, getting those um, processes and procedures in line, which we have done, um, which we need to, you know, now perfect for lack of better word. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, I'm really pleased at the, the hard work that the special education um, department and across all buildings put into this. Um, it was tied with our state performance plan um, indicators for the year. And um, again, the, the ETLs and everyone really did a um, you know, yeoman's work on, on this. Uh, one of the areas that was not part of the the review when we first were identified as having it, having the review, um, were the expectations, you know, during the pandemic. And they kind of added that into it to make sure that we um, were doing the things that we needed to do for students during that time period. And uh, I think that was an area that, you know, they really commented on um, really great documentation um, that we had for that and, you know, the high level of compliance that we had. So again, I'm just really pleased with everything. I know that Dr. Mackay um, also is really pleased with, um, you know, the ELL outcomes and the things we learned from that and um, some of the areas for corrective action that we'll be working on for our ELL programs are very consistent with what our plan has been all along. Um, so there'll be a lot of work coming up uh, for ELL in the area of um, the compliance identification and in curriculum. So again, um, you know, it didn't tell us anything that we, I think, didn't already know, but it validated a lot of the uh, good practices that we are doing currently. So that's it. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to um, answer them. Thank you, Mrs. Barris. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Gogan. I was just asking the committee if there are any questions for you or for Mrs. Barris. Doesn't seem like there are any. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Um, in other updates, uh, I wanted to let you know that we held our second mobile vaccination clinic. Um, we were one of the first districts to hop on that. Um, on our first visit on June 3rd, there were 57 um, people vaccinated. That included any student 12 and over with um, parent permission. And they came again on June 28th. I'm sorry, 24th, and there were 46 students that were, or 46 people that were vaccinated. So we're pleased about that. 
Um, I do want to let you know you're going to hear a little bit more in the presentation about the public and teacher forums that we held, um, but I'll skip that, um, move on to that. Um, we're excited to let you know that we received the um, century 21st century grant for $200,000 for Park Avenue after school care. Uh, we had missed that grant last year, um, but we're back in. So we're very excited about that. We also just received notification that we received the GLEAM grant. That's a, a grant for grades six through 12 to help us with the uh, fidelity of implement implementation of our research-based literacy materials that we have. Um, that grant award is for $78,000. We're very excited about that. In addition to that, we are going to be um, hiring uh, literacy consultants for each building to be working hand in hand with our literacy reset that we have in motion across the district to ensure that we are providing grade level content and support for students in the area of reading and English. So those, that's exciting news for us. The um, summer school update will be brief because uh, I've already shared that. July 6th, summer school starts. We have a special education program. We have a summer engagement program at Park Ave and Webster Middle School. And new this year, we were trying to break it up for our kids with a little bit of fun. We're adding um, lots of enrichment to balance off the academics with fun. So, for example, the Boys and Girls Club is coming over and offering babysitting courses at the middle school for some of the middle school students who sign up. We're going to be doing some robotics. I know at the elementary school, they're going to be including physical activity, uh, PE, um, and, and different types of activity. And our credit recovery program starts as well July 6th, but that runs only through July. And then we are um, knee deep in... Um, district summer planning. Uh, I hold a district leadership summit. Uh, traditionally, it's been two to three days across the summer, uh, but we've got a pretty busy full week of planning. Uh, one of our missions this year is to really reset across the district. I think this past year has proven to be chaotic, although we had lots of good structures in place. Uh, we're taking this opportunity to take a very deep dive on what our curriculum what are we using for curriculum? What are we doing with student data? And so mo most of our work at the DLT Summit will be focused on building stronger structures for ongoing communication with families. We'll be looking at what data measurements we're going to be using on a weekly basis and how we're gonna be communicating and looking at that data to inform our instructional practices. So we are um, gonna be working with um, our district leadership team, as well as our ILT teachers, as well as our, um, our SSOS support team from DESE. And we have um, other things planned as we do every year, which include um, uh, a legal overview on special education law and bullying and um, We'll be looking at um, evaluation training and calibration once again. Um, so it's a busy week of, of doing that. And um, we are, I'm also pleased to let you know that the adult education was also uh, awarded a $401,000 grant to continue the adult education um, program. We have a new director, Jenna Gouin. She's gonna be joining us at the next school committee meeting uh, and she'll be helping detail how the program is changed and what's gonna be different about it. So you'll get more information on that at the next meeting. Um, and lastly, I am pleased to say that I will be going to the live in-person uh, superintendents conference, um, which will be focused on strengthening culture and caring and building equitable access for all students, which lines up with our district goals very nicely. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I know I went fast and I really, again, apologize for working off my phone and that I can't see anybody. It's a handicap not seeing you. Thank you, Dr. Gogan, for your update. I know how challenging the technology piece can be, for sure. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Okay, well, hearing none, thank you for your very thorough update. 
um, as usual. And our next item on the agenda is the business manager's report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangel. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, hopefully we can get through this without getting lost. We're having a little bit of a thunderstorm here and the rain's coming down pretty good. So um, hopefully we can make it through. Uh, first item on the agenda is the school building committee update. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about this because later on in on the agenda, we have a presentation um, from our architects and OPMs about the project. Um, on June 17th, the building committee met and they were tasked um, at looking at the dif different options of build for a renovation project or, or a new school. And they narrowed it down to one option. It's a recommendation that they will be making and requesting from the school building. So um, we spent that Thursday night discussing and evaluating and looking at pros and cons of each option. And we will be reviewing that option, that choice with you later on tonight. Um, we also held some parent forums and forums with our staff on the last day of school. We held a June 18th uh, for Park Ave and Webster Middle School and High School together, two different forums to review the project and to really let our faculty um, make sure they're aware of what's going on, what options we're looking at. Um, so that way they can speak to it. Um, did you see that little glow? Um, it's me shining, right? It's me shining. Um, so they looked at, uh, just for them to get a real understanding of the project and what's happening out there to date. So when they hear things or questions in the community, they can speak to where we're at and know what we're doing and um, speak to the project a little bit. So uh, that's about it. I'm gonna save the rest for later for the presentation. Um, next item on my agenda is the Project Bread uh, Summer Eats Grant. I'm happy to say Ms. Nyland has applied again this year for a Project Bed Summer Grant and received $2,935. Um, this grant will be used for advertising and promoting, um, purchasing some supplies. Uh, she is going to be working out of the library also a couple days a week this summer. So we've got some tent and equipment to do some cooking demos um, at the library and for our school programs. So once again, I thank Ms. Nyland for her work. She is always looking um, for ways to reach our community members and make them aware um, of the programs that we're offering in town. Um, we were also notified from Project Bread that they're also um, rolling out a couple of billboards this summer and Webster is going to be getting two of them. Uh, we don't know where they're going to be locating, but they are also looking to advertise uh, the summer programs and the summer feeding programs um, to help the communities out. So if you're riding around town and you see a couple billboards that you know where they came from, it's um, the Project Red program. They're looking, you know, really to get the message saying, we're here for you, you know, come, come, come eat, come get some fresh, healthy food. Um, we want to assist. So we're happy about that. And then in my other reports, just a couple of things. Um, I wanted to let the school committee know um, in the past, our school committee warrants happen twice a month. They always aligned with our meetings. Um, the town is looking to streamline the processes and doing some cross training. So they are looking, they've requested from the school department um, to change the schedule and to make it go every other week. So one week they're focusing on warrants, the next week they're focusing on payroll for the town. Um, so that way there's a lot of cross training involved and they can utilize their staff better. Um, you know, I, we, I really didn't see a problem with it. We've talked about it with the town accountant and with the ability now to have a designee come in. Uh, warrants will still be submitted to the school committee for their review. Um, that's part of the process but we don't have to wait for those signatures anymore with the designee. So we're looking to streamline that and get a little bit um, more organized and on a schedule with an every other warrant, uh, weekly warrant, and then keep that consistent with the town. So just so you know, you'll still be getting them. Nothing's gonna change that way, but it's just that we're not gonna have to wait for the school committee meeting to actually approve the payment of those bills because we have the designee to do that for us. Do you have any questions or concerns about that? So Mrs. Frangeli, um, 
how will you be letting us know when we should be coming in? Will be the, there will there be a certain day of the month, or how should that work? Yeah, once we get on the schedule, and I'll let you know. I can shoot out an email and just say there's a warrant ready for signature. Um, could you please come in? Uh, typically, I've been reaching out to Miss Miss Millette. Um, you know, I usually just shoot her a text or something, and she is very fast in coming down to the office. And she's usually there that day or the next day. So, um, you know, we'll. Once we get the schedule going, the other every other week schedule, it, it, and just because it's every other week doesn't mean we're going to have a warrant every other week. You know, sometimes the school department, if we don't see that there's a need for it, we'll skip it and wait till the next one. So, um, you know, it would probably be by email or text notification saying, okay, we're ready. We have a warrant to sign now. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. All right. And then, um, Next item is budget. We're closing out our FY21 budget. Uh, it's been a little busy in the office getting all the year end processing done and narrowing things down. Uh, we are, I just wanted to let the school committee know we are looking at some uh, substantial surplus this year um, with all the federal money that has come in over the past year that's helped offset a lot of expenditures that might have come out of our budget you know, uh, cleaning supplies and uh, PPE. Um, we also had some learning at home, so we didn't need to, as many staff. We pre-paid some tuition at the end of last year. Um, our utilities were very low. So there are a lot of things that um, came together to make this happen, but we are looking at a, a million dollars this year, something that I have never seen in all of our years here um, in Webster. Um, but uh, we, uh, we will be working Excuse me, um, Mr. Prangeli, is anyone else having a difficult time hearing her? Yes. 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 Yeah, your sound is great. You, you faded. And and she's fading. <laughs> I'm fading? Yeah, we can barely hear you. Is this any better? No? Well, it's much noisier. Noisier. No, that's not good. We can't hear you. All right, I'll go back to the other way, but you said it's noisier, right? It is, but um, at least we can hear you. Okay, well, I'm just about done. You didn't miss much. But we are looking at a million surplus this year plus. Um, I'll have that final for you um, within the next month, probably at our next uh, meeting in the summer. But there are a lot of things that went into that with all the additional federal funding that we've got. Um, we are seeing that extra money come in, which will probably be going back to the town. I think they might also be in the same boat with some extra surplus there because of the federal money. And then the last item I had uh, and the other is just that our audits are starting. I've already received notification for FY21 to start coming in and doing some preliminary work. So they will be here in a couple of weeks and um, we will start working through the process of getting our audits going. And unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Brangeli. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Uh, through the chair. Yes, Mrs. Miller. Um, I don't have a question, but I have an update. It's part of update. I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate our Quo Vadis winners um, for their Quo Vadis awards. Our two seniors that have graduated, Catherine James and Vivian Popowski, and middle school teacher, Lynn Gingras. It's quite an honor. Thank you, Ms. Millett. That is quite an honor. Congratulations to them. Are there any other questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is the monthly fundraising applications. So as a reminder, um, the role of school committee is simply to review them. The responsibility for approving fundraising efforts uh, rests with building principals. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. You have three fundraising applications um, that are going to go on. One is from the National Junior Honor Society over at the middle school. They'll be holding a fundraiser at the 88, 20% of the profits um, from 
a, a selected night, um, it was in May, we'll be going towards um, their funds. And then over the summer, there's going to be two car washes, uh, one for the class of 2023 and one for the class of 2022. Great, thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments from the committee regarding the fundraising effort? Thank you. Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is the presentation and approval of the recommended Bartlett High School renovation option. And that's already been approved by the school building committee. Yes, it has. And tonight I'm just plugging in my phone. It really is a bad computer night for me. Um, <laughs> Um, tonight we have a short presentation from you and I'm pleased to um, in, introduce you again to our um, architect Ken Kovacs from Flansburg and Ken Goyette, our OPM from Collier. Um, he's going to share the screen and we're going to um, give you a, a brief presentation on our options and where we've been and what we've done. I'm just going to advance this and um, did everybody that advance? Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we're uh, excited to be here. It's a great part of this project um, with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. I'm Kent Kovacs with Flansburg Architects. Um, I've been working on the project um, going back to January. And, and Ken, if you want to introduce yourself and your firm. Sure, uh, Ken Guy Adams, Senior Director with Collier's Project Leaders. I'm joined tonight by with uh, John Bates, who's one of our project managers as well. Uh, we've been working with Webster for uh, since last uh, August, so um, it's been a great ride so far. Looking forward to uh, to serving as the OPM for the conclusion of the project. Thank you. Yep. Great. And and part of these projects um, that are really exciting when you're, you're brought in by the uh, MSBA, they saw a need to. Um, match your vision for the future for Webster. And there's a lot of towns across the Commonwealth that want to be in the same position as you. And so you're in a great spot to be in. And they have a great process that we follow. And at the end, um, you might think, you know, this is a state agency and they have their templates and default, you know, things that you have to match. They want this to be a school that supports Webster. And I think the district's done an amazing job going back to January um, since I came on board, but I know everybody's been involved uh, 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 early on in this process. And we're going to share with you the uh, selected option for your project. And it begins with the educational plan. Um, as part of the MSBA requirements, we have an educational programmer that was David Stephen from New Vista. And he uh, conducted a series of workshops, I believe four, um, going back to early spring. And that's uh, to pr prioritize the goals, the visions for the future, and really open it up for blue sky ideas. Um, I personally sat with um, kind of open doors at the school. It was very accommodating during COVID and a lot of teachers came in and I shared an update about the process and heard some great ideas that they look forward to in the school. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to the superintendent to, you know, just kind of walk us through part of that conversation. So it, it's amazing how much work really has been done since we started. Um, and the work that MSBA and um, our educational consultant, David Stevens, um, walked us through, helped us sort of fine tune where we wanna go by listening to teacher voice, administrator voice. Um, and so they walked us through this process and these are the highlights of the areas that everybody wants to make sure that we stick to when we build a, when we renovate or build, um, the Bartlett High School. One thing that really came out from the meetings with David Stevens was the importance of um, the school and community connection, maintaining safety, um, making sure that our academic programs were rigorous and that we involved more hands-on student choice and personalization um, and really keeping the focus on learning but making some interdisciplinary connections. Um, and that all came out from our teachers and from our administrators in this process. And, and I just wanna say that the timing of this 
uh, being accepted into MSBA. Uh, just as a reminder, you know, Bartlett put in six applications before they were accepted. So this is a really exciting time. And uh, we've really worked hard to make sure that people are informed, you know, as, as shared, you know, on the very last day of school, it, there was an urgency for us to make sure that every teacher in our district, pre-K through 12, knew what was going on before they left for the summer. We wanted to make sure everyone was informed. So the educational vision really is the foundation for any MSBA project. They don't just say here, take some money and build what you want. Uh, you have to tie it to your educational plan. So again, the timing for us couldn't be better. Mr. Thomas had applied for the innovation pathways and you know, we've been accepted to have the advanced manufacturing project lead the way courses starting next year. We're working on developing the health and human service pathways, um, but that's just like one spot piece of what our educational vision has to, what we have to produce, we have to, tell in detail what we want to be able to do for students, for the Bartlett High School student. What do we want every Bartlett High School student to be exposed to? So some of what came out in our educational programming was of course the innovation pathways, but also um, how to expand um, things like our makerspace area and a media lab. And by bringing over the pre-K and the early um, childhood program to Bartlett, expanding programs like our Future Teachers of America. Again, these are some of the things in our educational um, plan to actually build labs where kids can have hands-on experiences. Um, you know, having a healthcare lab, having a media center that's centrally located for all students to have access, regardless of the course or pathway that they're in. Um, for example, having our music students produce uh, podcasts or little TV radio shows, or our journalism class produce a, a small newspaper for our senior center or the community. Uh, having spaces where kids could get real life experiences were really important to us. And I think, I think the one thing that stands out from the year that we all had, um, our work as educators and re-engaging students is really crucial. That the traditional model of schools, of, of schooling, sitting down and having you know, teachers in the front of the classroom, we've got to change that because we saw over COVID how easily disconnected kids can become. And so our goal with this project is to make sure that we have all students engaged and that there are real life things that they can connect their learning to. Mr. Thomas? Hi, um, I'm on site. My neighbor just decided to mow the lawn, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that, that we're looking at is trying to um, give our graduates um, a jump in the workforce. We know that about 25, 30% of our seniors go directly into the the workforce upon graduation. So with our new programming, we're hoping to be able to get them MAC certification. That's a five level um, manufacturing collaborative uh, system. And a basic level means that um, someone has done blueprint reading, uh, is up on shop safety, that sort of stuff. OSHA general industry, there's OSHA 10, OSHA 30. Um, same thing for OSHA healthcare, looking at laboratory safe procedures, uh, and then NEMS is, is the uh, national management system where they uh, will get into CNC machining, which is uh, one of our highest growth um, industries in the greater Worcester area over the next five years. So we're looking um, very strongly with our industry partners to figure out how we can get some credentialing for our kids um, uh, as they move forward through the innovation pathways. And as you know, that will result in a uh, internship, worksite experience, or some type of capstone thing uh, equaling 100 hours. So our kids will be pretty well prepared uh, to enter the workforce or to pursue um, careers within that field 
further on in, in uh, college. Like I was saying, um, you know, Dr. Gogan alluded to this, this earlier that the, the role and function of the traditional high school has changed. Um, we're doing more of an emphasis. We need an emphasis more on college and career readiness uh, so that kids can have a, a chance to explore all the options um, before they graduate. And the innovation pathways were chosen. Uh, one of their criteria is they had to match up with uh, areas of high labor demand in your region. It's highly contextualized. And um, so one of the things that we're looking at in healthcare, you can branch out in three different ways. Uh, obviously mental health, uh, you can go into the lab tech and then you can go into more direct care, um, nursing, that sort of thing. And advanced manufacturing right now, uh, that's one of the highest growth areas uh, projections in, a, in a, um, in the average starting salary right now is just under $40,000. So we have kids that go directly into the workforce, but they're not going into jobs that pay like that. So we want to uh, give them better options. And we also are hoping to um, retain more of our students through these, through these options. Uh, we lose a lot of kids to vocational schools. So we wanna make sure that, that they have um, a transparent pathway that makes sense to them so that they understand what they're doing in school, how it connects to their future earnings and their future careers. So one of the things that we were looking at in this, um, the building renovation is a centrally located healthcare lab. I know that Kent will probably go through some of this stuff in the, um, the blueprint so you can see how um, things are grouped together the way it makes sense and connects and allows for more um, interdisciplinary approaches. Um, and that's what we're really trying to do is get a systems neighborhood approach with this. But the, um, the main areas that would be new for this would be the, the healthcare lab, the advanced manufacturing lab and the maker space. And as I mentioned, neighborhood clusters so that people are uh, more um, geographically located to each other um, high schools tend to be highly isolated departments and we need to kind of break down those barriers and, and the building will help us do that. Great, thank you very much. Um, and what's exciting about this is taking all these great ideas and trying to organize it to become the blueprint um, as, um, as was just discussed. And a simple organization goes a long way, whether it's a new building or a renovated building, um, what all the conversations came to were uh, three distinct um, concepts. And then that evolved into three distinct wings, a district focused wing with district office, a new pre-K program, a community resource and adult education as one component. And then the academic, having academic functions, as well as this innovation cluster and administration and guidance. So when you come into the school, this is what you're greeted with. And this is showing what all the great kids are doing. And then a community wing that could be locked off during after hours in uh, summertime to support a variety of different activities. So if you're able to cluster those large venue spaces, um, such as the cafeteria, the auditorium, the gymnasium, that just helps with security and supervision and just operation of the building. So these three uh, drivers, um, is what we use to look at your project for renovation or new addition. And uh, we'll show you later some of the planning that um, came from this. We also dove in in more detail. So around uh, the new media center, kind of formal library, what should be around there? A digital media lab that would have green screens where the kids could film and edit tapes. Special education is part of that. Large group spaces. We want to look at large spaces of the library and media center as well as um, as well as breakout spaces, and then uh, English language support spaces as well. And then looking at diagrams such as the pre-K, uh, it was really important for this project that the life skills had a relationship with the pre-K program. And then of course, the day-to-day -day function of having pre-K students with their play areas, and also how parents get to and from with their young ones to that program. So even though these are bubble diagrams, they're really helpful for the architects and designers to look at it when we evaluate your options innovation cluster. Again, this is really exciting. When we came on board, um, everything that the school's doing 
extremely well already, but then how do you build upon this? And right when you come into the front door of the school, you can see the great things are happening. Here you can have a new maker space connected to the visual arts, connected to the outside with advanced manufacturing and then a close connection to general classrooms. So how do all these pieces unfold uh, kind of as a puzzle when we begin to looking at the plan? And then the community cus cluster, which is in the district wing with adult education, community resource, and then a, a, a big component with the healthcare pathway. Um, so these were really great things that came from meeting with the teachers and then those visioning workshops with New Vista, the educational programmer. And then that brings us to what was evaluated and part of the Massachusetts School Building Authority, they wanna leave no stone left unturned. So you're required to look at just updating the building to code. Um, this does not align with other projects um, under the MSBA as far as uh, bringing, uh, moving walls, meeting those adjacencies, improving the educational uh, functionality. It just takes your existing spaces, provides some proper ventilation and paint on the wall. And it does not align with state standards. So this option really is not an option, but it serves as a great baseline when we look at um, some of the real options that I'll go through. Uh, option two, this was renovating the existing school without any demolition, but also kind of repurposing some of the space. Now this tracks at slightly larger, you'll notice from the other options at 185,000 gross square feet. Is your school um, is much larger than a high school with your enrollment of 445 students. Um, per MSBA standards, a school for 900 students would be around 185,000 square feet. And so this project had a lot of challenges understanding um, program spaces as it meets the MSBA and what's eligible and ineligible for reimbursement. With that, it brings us into option three, four, and five, where we look at some of the, I would say the most inefficient spaces and subtract them from the program to get on point with the MSBA program at 158,000 gross square feet. And we have option three, that's a full renovation option four that provides some additions and then option five as required new construction. And then from the uh, school building committee after they evaluated this and looked at evaluation matrix pros and cons uh, with all the options, option three was the preferred option to be submitted to the MSBA. And I'll walk you through that uh, right now. And this is just a snapshot at, again, looking at these various options as it relates to um, a renovation option. So option three was selected. And with the project, you can see around the existing school, this is a site plan and everything within that red dashed line is new work. So we're gonna look at new drop-offs. We're gonna look at new plazas, outdoor learning opportunities, the pre-K program play area, new parking, new circulation. So this is gonna transform um, the look and the feel of this existing building. And we're also um, able to look at how do you support greater uh, field amenities. And so off to the east, there could be a new um, uh, multi-purpose field and stadium that replaces your existing field with the track. And with that, we'd have to uh, replace the softball and provide ample parking for that program. So we're able to look at this and capture some costs um, as part of that option. And if you remember the diagram that we looked at early on, this for a renovation just aligns with that diagram. Off to the left, we have the district related programs. District offers remains with an adjacency to the pre-K program and the life skills. And then the community resource healthcare pathway and the nurse all clustered on the uh, left side of the program in that wing. And then in the center is that innovation cluster with administration, advanced manufacturing, the arts. We have an outdoor classroom that's captured to bring natural light into the plan. So it's a really exciting uh, renovation, and uh, we're, we're happy the way that the plan was conducive to the vision. And then I think the community wing really works well. It aligns with all the conversations. You're able to have the renovated auditorium, the gymnasium, and the dining and cafeteria all on the community wing. So you're able to lock off for security and operation of the building, that entire uh, right side of the building. When we go to the upper levels, we'll have new science labs, updated classrooms, special education distributed throughout the media center that has the digital media lab with green screen opportunities and computer science. And so we have all that great program that was discussed over the months um, in your renovated school. 
And that's just a quick summary of the plan and upcoming events. We submit this preferred option to the MSBA on July 7th. And then that goes to an MSBA board vote on August 25th. And so uh, kind of now to August 25th, they're gonna review the project, ask some questions, the district will respond. And we uh, anticipate a successful uh, meeting on the 25th to continue design work. And with that, that concludes uh, the designer's update and um, I'll take any questions if you have any. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, hearing lots of rain where I am, I apologize. <laughs> um, if there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to support the school building committee recommendation for option three as has been presented this evening. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the second. Lori, would you please hold the committee? Member Naparata? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Thank you. And Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. unanimously. How very exciting. For, for Bartlett and for the whole community. So the next item on the agenda is the acceptance of donations for the DHS Student of the Month and PBIS Awards. Thank you. Thank you, Ken and Kent, and for everyone who participated in that um, work that we've done so far too. Um, Mrs. Guiney over at the high school has received in multiple gift cards for the PBIS rewards and student of the month rewards. I would like to give a shout out to Lake Pizza, Honeydew, KFC, Dip and Donuts and Bogies and ask the school committee to accept this donation. Once again, in Webster Kindness Matters and um, it never fails to amaze me how much our community supports our students and the work that we do to support, make our students feel good about themselves. Great. Thank you, Dr. Dogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept these donations. So moved. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes unanim unanimously. And thank you um, very much for the generous donations as well. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the Park Avenue Elementary School 2021 to 2022 student handbook. Mrs. Parmley and um, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Thomas are gonna go over the changes in their handbook. Typically we do this in August, but we're doing it early this year purposefully because we want all of our handbooks translated into multiple languages and ready to go um, in August. So we, that will take some time. So they're gonna give you a summary of some of the changes and that all of the changes are in your school committee packet. Mrs. Parmley. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Um, I do want to give a shout out to um, our Dean, Ann Thompson. She did the lion's work here on this, on this handbook. And so I just wanted to make sure to thank her for that. And so looking at our handbook changes for the 2021-2022 school year, as you know, the dates and current staffing and page numbers, those were all updated, as well as any minor punctuation or formatting issues. Not included in this handbook currently are our picture days. However, staff changes have been updated and will continue as the summer goes on. And we will also be updating according to the district calendar and sending that out with our welcome letter. Other changes include page eight, of course, we've updated it to signify the new year. Page nine, under the school day, we changed under note half day dismissals are at 12 p.m. We also included that bag lunches will be provided on those days as approved by Ellen Nyland. Page nine, we added in our social emotional learning 
into our Unified Art seven day cycle. Page 10 under dismissal numbers, we added, if your child is returned from the bus and you are later than four o'clock p.m. picking up your child, your child will be sent to the school's after school program and you will be charged for the day's attendance to the program. Previously, we had given up to three times that this could occur. We felt like in the best interest of the child, some of these students have not eaten since 1130. And we felt like by four o'clock, they needed to be supervised, have a healthy snack, be able to get a head start on their, on their homework and also be able to do something fun because sometimes students are picked up an hour later, sometimes it's two hours later. And so we felt like in what's best for children, especially our very young ones, we wanted to be able to get them into the program where they could get something to eat and be supervised and participate in what's happening instead of hanging out in the office, sometimes being privy to confidential conversations. Page 13, under the before and school after school program, um, we removed kindergarten through grade six and added kindergarten through grade four. We also removed um, during planned half days of school. It talks about operating two afternoon sessions and after speaking to Lois Taylor, who was our director, um, we kept that as just one session completely from 12 o'clock until three o'clock. Page 16, we did remove the snack piece. We have not participated in that program in the last couple of years. Page 26, under homeschool communication, we changed the school-wide monthly newsletter letter to school-wide bi-monthly newsletter. And some of that was from feedback from both staff and from Dean Thompson, feeling like it was more um, beneficial to have two months at a time. We have so many staff and so many wonderful things we wanna be able to include that, that giving staff more time to be able to make that high quality. We have a very lengthy newsletter and being able to do that and continue that so that it's not like, on the heels of the last one that we just had completed. Page 28, under internet, internet use, we removed students will have a combined media, library and instructional technology class once every six day special schedule. We added students have access to technology in their general education classroom on a daily basis and as part of their technology special one time every seven days. We also took out library services the students use the library for scheduled library times once in every six day cycle. And this is because we do not currently, we're not going to continue with the model of a librarian. We have now put our social emotional learning piece in there, which was highly successful and we're going to continue with that. However, we do wanna have students to have access to the library and we are hoping to go more to the model of parent volunteers and our teachers to be able to utilize it on a regular basis. So we added, the students may use the library for scheduled library times with their classroom teacher and classroom parent volunteers. Books can be checked out for a loan period of one seven day cycle with one renewal and please contact the office for more information. On page 30 under parent teacher organization, PTO, we removed for more information, please email the current officers and search for them on Facebook. We took that out just temporarily because right now we do not have an established PTO complete board. So our goal is to be able to kick that off, get you know parents excited and then turn it over to them and let them continue on. So we did put for more information, um, please email Mrs. Parmley as we need assistance to re-establish our Park Avenue PTO for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year and please contact the office until a PTO is established for meeting information. Page 31, talking about a report card. We updated it with the 2021, 2022, the dates that will coincide with our WPS school calendar. Page 37, we removed the Webster Education Foundation. Page 69, um, I believe, Mrs. Perangeli, are you providing that or do they already have it? What is that, Ms. Conley? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the AHERA notification. I'll be providing that. That should be updated in the handbook. It's just the fiscal year that's going to change. Okay, terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. And then page 70 through 78, the addendum was removed, and that had everything to do with our COVID changes that we had this past year. 
And that about wraps it up. Are there any questions? Are there any questions or comments from the committee? I actually have just one question and it's related sure. to the after school care on half days. Um, it sounds like the after school care will now be ending at three o'clock. Is that, is that correct? I do not believe so. I thought it was going to continue until six o'clock. Let me. Oh, okay. Yep. So what it's, I think before it was worded in such a way, it sounded like they had two sessions going and almost like students had to be in one session or the other. So what they did is they just made it one long session from 12 o'clock to six o'clock. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you for clarifying that. Are there sure. any other questions for anyone? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the Park Avenue 2021 to 2022 student handbook as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, could you close the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Navarata? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Fastened unanimously. Thank you again, Mrs. Carmley. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Webster Middle School 2021 to 2022 student handbook. Mr. No, Kelly. I'm here. I'm, here Kelly. For Hi, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly. Hi, good evening. It's all good. How are you doing? Very good. You? Well, thank you. So our changes aren't, um, we didn't really change the substance, more so just the language of our handbook. Uh, starting with, of course, you know, the, the year change on the cover, um, updating the school calendar, adjusting the table of contents to, to meet the adjustments of the pages and whatnot. Uh, on page seven, we edited some of the paragraphs under parent guardian responsibilities to include class dojo as one of the avenues that the parent should like look at more often in order to see what's going on with their child or in their classrooms. Um, on page seven, we removed, uh, we had doubled up for some reason student withdrawal, so we removed the redundancy on page seven. Uh, page nine, we moved parent pickup and drop off from page 18 up to page nine. It flowed better up on page nine than it did on page 18. On page nine, we also updated our walkers protocol. Uh, page 11, we changed some vocabulary to be more inclusive of students' academic paths after Webster Middle School, just in terms of what the guidance counselors will be able to do for them um, after leaving grade eight with us. Um, we have employment, per uh, employment permits in our handbook, just because some of the kids by the time they're leaving eighth grade, they can get jobs. Some of them end up working at Market Basket. I believe the working age there can be 14. So we have some of our eighth graders that even start bagging groceries at the age of 14 over uh, Market Basket in Oxford, which is pretty cool. Uh, page 12, we edited the promotion and retention policy. It started off with a chart and then a paragraph. So we, we reworded the paragraph and put that in above the bullets in order just to segue into it a little bit better. We changed our honor roll expectations. Uh, we, we altered the grades by a point or two just to kind of fall in line with a, a spectrum that works a little bit better. Um, we removed the language of excused absences from the handbook. Um, attendance when parents are calling out their students we've asked them to identify four things that were not in the handbook before provide the child's name the homeroom teacher of the child the reason for the absence or tardy and a phone number where you can be reached in case we have a lot of parents who have their students marked absent in the morning and then they get the one call and they panic um, not knowing why or when so if they call in the kids that makes it easier for us and we don't send them a one call um, Page 16, we updated the language in the tardiness section. Uh, page 17, we changed the language for dismissals from school. Uh, we made it far more specific as to who could dismiss a child. Uh, too often we have some parents that say, oh, my brother's cousin's sister, Johnny, is going to come pick them up. And that can't happen. So we made it a little bit more black and white and clear as to who could and could not pick up a child. Um, the school dress code, we, we changed a couple words just to make it flow a little better. Seasonably appropriate attire, attires, I believe what we used. 
We updated the technology on page 24 to include cell phone use and whatnot. And ultimately, I just alphabetized the potential reasons for a discipline to make it look pretty when people were looking at the list. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Um, to the chair, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Did you look at page three of the handbook? I, I might be wrong, but in that opening letter, those years don't kind of jive. It goes welcoming the class of 2029 and then it goes to 2027. We're missing a year there. You are correct. One of the years I think is wrong. I right. think it should go 2028, shouldn't it? Um, we welcome the class of 2029 and then we have 2028, 27 and 26 because 2025 gets into the high school. So we're welcoming the class of 2029 into fifth grade and they right. will join the classes of 2028, 2027, and 2026. Okay. I Thank thought you, you missed one. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. I appreciate it. Miss Millet. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the updated Webster Middle School Student Handbook for the school year 2021 to 2022. So moved. Second. second. Motion and, and two enthusiastic seconds. Um, Lori, would you please call the committee? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member Millett? Yeah. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you again, Mr. Kelly. My pleasure. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Bartlett High School 2021 to 2022 student handbook. Good evening, Mr. Thomas. Good evening, Chair Siddiqui. Um, like, um, as was the case at Park Avenue, uh, Ms. Nieves was highly instrumental, did most of the work on updating this. So she is here tonight as well. If you have any questions, she may be able to um, elaborate on a little bit better than I could. Uh, it looks like there's a long list of changes here, but there's nothing that's actually um, changed from a content area, just more updated. We had, if you recall in the past, we would have Thursday ADPs, which are two hour detentions and things like that, that, that we no longer do. Uh, I can go through each of these. I have your I know they are in your, your packet, but if you want me to go through these uh, page by page, most of them are just updated rather than changed. So I don't know what your preference is. Do you want me to go through e each one of them individually? What is, uh, I don't have a preference. Um, is there, what is the desire of the committee? Will we like Mr. Thomas to itemize each um, edit? I read through them earlier, so I am okay if you don't itemize. But that's Same just here. me. Let, I see you nodding your head. Mr. Adamopoulos, I'm Mrs. Naparata, sorry to call you out, but do you have any um, reservations about us accepting the, the revisions if we've already reviewed them? No. I've reviewed them. I'm so fine. If, if um, the committee is okay with that, I will entertain a motion to approve the updated Bartlett High School 2021 to 2022 student handbook as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, could you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And it's nice to see you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Sorry, I muted. 
Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the um, one year memorandum of agreement for the unit B. I'll Thank you. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Dr. Gogan. Oh, I, I just was going to give a quick summary that we met with unit B. Um, like many of the other contracts, we want to offer a one year um, extension with the um, a 2% increase. For that. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve that memorandum of agreement as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Laurie, would you call the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Napparata? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Yeah. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is uh, the appointment of a school committee member to the Administrative Assistance Negotiating Committee. I'll entertain a nomination. Through the chair? Yes, Ms. Apparatus? I nominate Member Millett to participate. Second. There's a motion and a second. Are there any further nominations before we uh, proceed? Hearing none, um, there's a nomination and a second. Lori, would you please hold the committee? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Motion passes unanimously, and thank you, Ms. Millett, for um, accepting the nomination and, and negotiating on our behalf. And the next item on the agenda is the review transfer signing of warrants to bills and vouchers. Any questions about anything in our packet? There are no further questions. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. The motion of a second. Lori, would you please call the committee? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Good evening. Thank you, Thank you very much. Have good a good night. evening, everyone. Or just stop your recording.